We've all heard good and bad things about AMD's new Zen 4 based Ryzen 7000 CPUs, but we all can agree on the fact these processors, for the most part, offer truly great performance. So if you happen to be among those that wish to purchase one of the regular X CPUs, which model should you actually pick? In this video, I'll therefore be comparing the following CPUs with each other, 7950X versus 7900X versus 7700X versus 7600X. First things first, the price. In early March 2023, for the flagship 7950X, we're spending about 570 to 600 US dollars. The 7900X can be had for about 430 to 450 dollars. The 7700X for 330 to 350 dollars. And finally, the 7600X for roughly 230 to 240 dollars. Cores and threads. The 7950X comes equipped with 16 cores and 32 threads, the 7900X with 12 cores and 24 threads, the 7700X then offers 8 cores and 16 threads, whereas the 7600X boasts 6 cores and 12 threads. Specifications Aside from the core and thread count, these four CPUs don't actually differ all too much in terms of clock speeds, but do come with slightly different TDP ratings and needless to say, come equipped with different amounts of cash respectively. The integrated Radeon graphics remains identical on all models. Test setup. The 7950X is going onto the ASRock X670E Tai Chi Carrara motherboard, the 7900X onto the ASRock X670E Pro RS, the 7700X then goes onto the ASRock B650E Steel Legend, and finally, the 7600X ends up on the ASRock B650 Pro RS. What all of those systems have in common is the identical graphics card, namely the ASUS RTX 3090 TUF Gaming OC. I've also used the identical memory, the Kingston Fury Beast RGB DDR5 6000 MHz CL36 with 32GB. The test systems, therefore, are pretty much identical and all CPUs were cooled by a 360mm AIO liquid cooler. Clock speeds. As we've already seen on paper in the specifications, these four Ryzen processors barely differ that much as far as clock speeds are concerned, at least at full load with all cores put to work. Now once we glance over to the single core test, things look slightly different in terms of boost clocks. While the 7600X, 7700X and 7950X wave at us with close to identical max boost clocks, the 7900X kinda manages to stand out with an about 200 MHz higher boost. Performance, productivity. As always, starting things off with Cinebench R23. Here we are getting to see a somewhat nice linear picture. It becomes obvious the true rendering beasts go by the names 7950X and 7900X. While the 7700X and 7600X don't offer bad performance in the multicore test, they are noticeably slower and therefore more suited towards casual rendering workloads. You certainly wouldn't be using those in a professional environment. The 7900X and 7950X manage only minimally higher results in this single core test though meaning that in day-to-day -day use within Windows, as well as gaming, there shouldn't be any noteworthy differences really. Now let's take a look at the 7-zip benchmark. This sweet spot, it seems, is being delivered by the 7900X, with the 7950X not delivering that much of an improvement, considering its price premium. Nonetheless, its gain shouldn't be ignored either. Here the 7600X does show some weaknesses, something that should be pretty clear dealing with a 6-core part. V-Ray 5 benchmark. Here we are seeing almost the same proportions. The only difference, the 7950X is now allowed to stretch its legs and show what it's capable of. The best all-rounder performance still is being offered by the 7900X though. The 7700X still is somewhat usable here, however. The Corona benchmark goes to show that we do lose out on quite some time with the 7600X and 7700X when it comes to rendering. If you apply this to much longer rendering projects, things add up. 
but even here, the 7950X is not all that much faster than the 7900X, at least not by as much as we'd maybe hope for. Having arrived in the Blender test, we of course see fairly similar results. Here the 7950X is able to once more speed past the 7900X by a noticeable margin though. Both Ryzen 9 models leave those cheaper, slimmed down processors behind them by a fair bit. Now in the handbrake test, the 7950X is performing rather poorly, disappointingly only being minimally faster than its smaller brother 7900X. Here I'd even go as far and state the 7700X isn't performing too bad. The 7600X, well, one can't expect too much. In the final productive test, Vegas Pro 20, the 7900X once more delivers as the overall most impressive all-rounder result. Those 16 cores of the 7950X don't seem to be scaling too well here. The 7700X still performing somewhat acceptable here for a few rendering jobs here and there, while the 7600X for my specific needs is already to be considered to be too slow. The 7600X simply is not really a processor made for productivity, which should not come as a surprise really. Things take a more positive turn for it in the following tests. Gaming. 3D Mark Time Spy is one of those benchmark tools I don't really enjoy using and comparing with. The only one that manages to somewhat stand out here being the 7600X. Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Here we are practically seeing identical FPS results, that even applies to the 1% lows. Obviously, these CPUs are this fast, it becomes a real challenge for me to properly showcase the differences with my RTX 3090 graphics card. This is where a lottery win certainly would come in handy, allowing me to buy a more powerful graphics card for my tests. Now make sure to stay tuned, because I still have something important to say regarding this issue in my conclusion. It applies to many of you as well. Even in Borderlands 3, we see nearly the same result. It's just that the 1% lows of the 7600X slightly drop by roughly 6% compared to those other models. Luckily, Cyberpunk 2077 goes to show us a little more. The 7950X happens to be the only one managing 4% higher average results, as well as even 9% smoother 1% lows as opposed to the 7900X for instance. As far as the 7600X is concerned, the average remains totally comparable, the lows on the other hand drop behind the 7700X by nearly 11%. In Far Cry 6, we again see all CPUs outputting the same average FPS. Here too, we only see the 7600X coming in at 7% lower minimums. Forza Horizon 5 makes all four contenders perform identically. Man, I really seem to be running into some nasty GPU bottlenecking here. This also goes to show in the now slightly dated game title GTA 5. In Horizon Zero Dawn, we are also achieving results that smell like bottlenecking. Only the 7600X slightly lags behind the 1% lows by maybe a mere 5%. Metro Exodus then again makes these processors perform identically, plus minus a few frames. Minimal yet certainly interesting differences can be seen in Red Dead Redemption 2. Here the 7700X is taking the number one spot. With its 8 cores it seems to scale better along with its potentially higher boost clock. I would not consider it a real win though. Rise of the Tomb Raider. The average appears identical, however in those 1% lows, the 7600X with its 6 cores drops behind slightly. That would be probably like 8% less than the others. Interestingly, the 7600X seems to be scaling just as well as the more expensive contenders in Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Gaming average FPS certainly did not come unexpected that the only minor difference can be seen within those 1% lows, especially as far as the 7600X is concerned. It drops slightly behind the others, albeit it's totally negligible, at least when being paired with my RTX 3090. Power consumption and temperatures. Obviously, a higher core count leads to a higher power draw. That's a well-known fact. The power consumption at first glance seems to be somewhat linear to the raw performance offered, which is good. 
The most attractive one out of the bunch seems to be the 7700X overall. Not only does it come with a reasonable power draw at full load, but also doesn't go crazy when idling. All the bigger the shock when glancing over to the idle power draw of the flagship 7950X. That's 40 watts more or 52% more. That's not very appealing. The 7900X seems to offer much more balanced results. I've also measured the power consumption of the total system while gaming. As you've seen, in my case, we saw practically identical frame rates. Nonetheless, with the 7900X or 7950X, we are consuming 36 to 80 watts more, or 7 to 16% more than with a 7700X or 7600X. So those of you that need to pay attention to high electricity bills most likely would go for the most power efficient model. The temperatures also end up rather high up there. That's because of AMD's intentional, aggressive 95 degrees Celsius temperature target for these X models. As a matter of fact, the temperature with a few easy optimizations can greatly be reduced. And that also applies to power draw. Conclusion. The productive benchmarks clearly show that more cores and threads equal higher performance. Needless to say, the flagship model 7950X therefore always performs best. But as a matter of fact, when taking into account the oftentimes worse scaling in a handful of applications, along with higher pricing and power consumption, I would not consider it the overall winner here. Those that don't want to spend as much money and are looking for the perfect all-rounder CPU for rendering can easily just go with the 7900X. The 7700X can be used as an emergency solution as far as productivity workloads are concerned, but nonetheless, it's very usable, just not ideal for professional use when making a living with rendering. In the aspect gaming, my measly tests have shown that there aren't any noteworthy differences between the four models. That, however, is due to my GPU bottleneck, and I certainly am embarrassed of the fact I couldn't better showcase the differences in gaming performance. The limiting factor simply being the RTX 3090. I mean, I could have gone with the 720p resolution instead, but on the other hand, a lot of you watching wouldn't really exactly know how that would apply to real gaming configurations, since 720p these days is a fairly unrealistic screen resolution to go with. If my finances allow for it in the near future, I definitely want to get myself a more powerful GPU for future tests. Of course, there's also a positive side to all that, and that is that with a graphics card within the performance tier of an RTX 3090, as far as gaming performance is concerned, it won't matter which of these four CPUs you're actually getting, be it the 6, 8, 12, or 16 core. Essentially, we are being offered great frame rates, which not only applies to the average, but 1% lows as well. And those that happen to game at WQHD 1440p or even 4K UHD, without a doubt, could just as well grab the 7600X and call it a day. It won't even hold you back with even really powerful GPUs. So I hope this comparison, despite its flaws, still was somewhat useful to you. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.